Hi, my name is Mark Suter, or Garlic in 3D Game Lab. Welcome back to another exciting meeting of the technology integration strand within 3D Game Lab. Um, we're going to be looking at a series of MOOCs, um, which is M-O-O-C in the chat window, massively open online courses. Uh, they're typically free and put on by uh, large prestigious universities or, you know, Joe Schmo, so it doesn't matter. Um, but the uh, uh, the whole point of a MOOC is to make the material that is taught at these universities available to basically anybody. Of course, you don't get college credit, but that's not necessarily the objective of everybody taking these courses. It's to actually learn something, which, you know, isn't that everybody's college objective? Um, so I'm going to go through these fairly fast-paced. I'll try not to go too fast. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. You should be looking at the, uh, actually, let me look at my text pad here real quick. Um, so why would anybody actually use MOOCs? Why am I including this in the technology integration strand? Um, number one, teacher refresher. A lot of topics that um, I know you guys teach or um, high school, college, even middle school, you might need a refresher on the content or another way to teach the same content. Maybe you understand biology really well, but maybe your students aren't getting good grades and you're not sure why. So it might give you a good idea or a new resource, uh, a new method, teaching method on how to you know, instruct your students and uh, help them. That's the ultimate goal of technology integration in the first place, right, is to help your students. Um, student supplemental and catch up or work ahead. Uh, we all have students that are fall into both of those categories. Um, the uh, tracking and con has been improved. You are considered a coach, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, but perhaps you are going to flip the classroom, which is popular in Ohio right now, where the teacher doesn't lecture at all. They instruct the students to watch the videos and stuff as homework, which is the lecture. And then when they come to class, the entire class period is spent uh, reviewing information the students have already looked at and watched the lectures of. So that's the flipping the classroom model. And our school is doing that. Some of our math teachers are doing that already. Um, ooh, somebody's got a loud bark. Barking dog. I'm going to mute. I think it was Christina. That's OK. <laughs> It hurt my ears. Um, the uh, uh, opportunity, uh, everybody, uh, traditionally you have to have a good resume with good references to get a job. Well, that is still true to an extent. However, I know personally several people who didn't graduate college, and but they have an awesome skill set. Uh, and they make three or four times what I make. <laughs> and that there's a there is a transition or a shift in um, what it takes to get a job. Uh, Lisa and Chris have talked about the open badge initiative and that Mozilla is starting. If you're not familiar, you can look it up later. But basically, that it's a new way to prove what you know by earning these badges. Or imagine you had a student who learned all about. Uh, the science or languages or computer programming and built an e-portfolio and linked all of the work that they've done. And then somebody else has a degree. Well, when you go to the job interview, who's impressive? Well, the people are really going to enjoy seeing all the stuff that you've built um, rather than saying, hey, that's a nice transcript you got there. Now, that's, that's a little oversimplified. I understand that. Um, so don't send me hate mail, but under all I want you to understand is that there is a shift. It is possible to uh, use these in the classroom um, for a lot of different reasons. Okay, now the actual tools. Coursera. This is a um, offering from uh, Stanford uh, originally. They. Uh, I'll show you one of the courses here that I'm taking. I'm going to show you basically one course that I'm taking in each one and how they how the course progresses. Uh, I'm taking Internet History, Technology, and Security from the University of Michigan. And if we looked at the syllabus, uh, it would just go through the actual topics. But I want to show you how the actual instruction looks. Um, if I click on Video Lectures here on the left side, 
you'll see every single lecture and the length of time. You also have the ability to turn on and off subtitles and the ability to download, which I did download one ahead of time, and it looks like this. This is the professor. Uh, he's actually from Stanford. Um, you would just go through and watch this video, and it's video of him on the right side, and the left side is kind of a PowerPoint type thing. And he goes through and instructs. Not all the videos are like that. Um, some of them are him interviewing um, you know, high-profile characters. Evidently, this guy has really good connections because he's interviewing business people pretty high up in you know, Amazon and Microsoft, etc. cetera. Uh, so it's pretty impressive. Now, the actual grades, if I go into the syllabus on the left side here, the grades are established. Uh, you watch the videos, and then week one, there's a quiz. Week two, there's a peer-graded reflection uh, quiz, etc. The final is a peer-graded assignment. Now, the reason there's peer-graded is uh, there's 60,000 students or so in this class. So you could imagine trying to grade that. Even an auto-grading, which some of the other ones do, is possible. But they do a peer-grading, and that looks like this. Peer grading, you, this first one, the assignment was, uh, oh, let me go to the assignment. There we go. Uh, they give you a writing prompt in two to four hundred words, uh, write this. You, they do not take points off for structural mistakes, grammar, punctuation. Then after you've turned that in, you have to go in and grade someone else's using this rubric. They give you an um, answer from somebody else, and you go through and you evaluate it and give them feedback at the bottom, um, constructive suggestions, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a neat model, instructional model. I did not do that assignment, so I am not allowed to evaluate my classmates. I was not a good student in this one. And this guy actually sends emails out to us and lets us know how many people are in the class, how many people uh, uh, completed the first peer-graded assignment and dropped the class, and et cetera. So they communicate really well. You get a certificate if you uh, get a passing grade in this class, which you, um, I think they mail it to you, that one. Uh, the next tool, Udacity. This is this is my favorite of the MOOC providers. Um, they're a little limited on what the courses that they offer are. Um, I'll show you the intro to statistics. They only have. Oh, what did I find out? It doesn't say. Much fewer, less than twenty classes. Um, in the statistics class, the reason I like this, it has this auto next thing that you watch this video, which is basically a guy writing on a Wacom tablet. And then they tell you to type in the answer, which I'll highlight here. Got to use the cool little tools, right? You would type in your answer there, submit, and then if you get it right, you uh, move on. If you don't, you go watch the video again until you get it, I guess. Um, Oops, et cetera, et cetera. So it's it's kind of a cool, oops, cool method for uh, checking for understanding as you progress, and it's not so chunky as in take watch all five of these videos and take a quiz. It's very incremental. Every video uh, has a question answer, question answer, question answer. So you really understand the topic because you've been evaluated the whole way through. Um, they also offer uh, sending you the certificates. Um, and I, I just like this method. Maybe it just fits my learning style, but it's so broken down into small pieces that I don't feel like, wow, you just covered 30 different things, and I understand 10 of them. Okay, They really break it down. Now, I can't say that's for all the classes, but this is my sampling of these MOOCs. Um, so that's what you get. Uh, are there questions so far? I'm going to go check the chat window here. If you're watching the recording later, you don't see the chat. Um,
No way. Penn State has a gamification um, MOOC course, Bonnie, you said, on August 27th. That's awesome. I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, I don't know how the professors are monetarily compensated, uh, if at all, or if it's just part of their included in their workload, which they have a limited workload that they're legally or supposed to have by contract. They teach. Yeah, this is the exact same course in the paying students. If you go look, read the about section in some of these, um, they explain you know why they started it and um, what their motivations are. Basically, people in poor countries all over the world, a lot of those places might have internet access but not very good water, et etc. et cetera. But they, they uh, really value internet access. And with internet access, they can now get some of the top education in the world. So it's really, really awesome. You don't have to keep up with any of the assignments. If you don't, you just don't get the certificate of completion. Now, it is fairly asynchronous. You don't have to do it at the exact pace. But like the last one I showed you in Coursera, there are deadlines for the quizzes and the peer grading assignments. So you know, week to week, you have to keep up. Um, you can't do the whole course in one day, nor can you do it all in one year. You have to sort of keep pace with them. Um, Uh, oh, University of Penn. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Um, awesome. Okay, so there is Udacity, um, one of my favorites just because of their uh, grading method. Um, now, I'm going to show you Khan Academy. Many of you guys are already probably familiar with it, um, but so I'll just highlight it. I covered it in one of the other meetings. Um, Khan Academy. Uh, was created by a guy, uh, is it James Kahn? Something Kahn, that's his last name. Um, and it's all videos produced, I'm pretty sure, by him. It's a massive undertaking. But they just opened up a computer science section. If you look in the sections in the watch category, I'm already logged in. Um, these sub uh, categories are massive and deep. Um, the science has healthcare and medicine, even which one of the people attending tonight is in the healthcare industry. So I'll show you that one real quick, just as a quick sampling. Um, let's look at blood sugar levels. Bacterial meningitis. Now, one of the um, things you should be aware of is many of the videos in all of these MOOCs are hosted on YouTube, which is why I'm doing this meeting from my house tonight instead of at school. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, as far as evaluation, some of them have, like the mathematics, if we go into the practice section, there is what's called a knowledge map, which is kind of looks like a Google map. And you basically start in the uh, corner or and start building out your skills as you go. Oops, that's not what I wanted to click on, sorry. I'll just zoom out from this knowledge map. It's like I'm zoomed into somebody's house here on a Google map. And as I zoom out, um, you see all of the interconnectedness of the mathematical uh, subjects, geometry, a whole wing for you know trigonometry. Um, show, if I click show all, yeah, it just gets massive if you look through this list, how detailed it is. Anyways, it's color-coded, so um, proficient, suggested, in review. And these are ones I've not even done anything on, of course. Um, but it's a great way to track your students. You can become a coach. If they sign up here, they can give you an ID, and um, you can be their coach, which basically means you can see all of their accomplishments, achievements, et cetera, et cetera. It gives you a tutorial on how to do this. Here's how I add a coach, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in a managed students. It, it's pretty comprehensive, but the amount of topics covered is what's really impressive about this website. I guess there's no real um, checking for understanding as you go. It's just a, a place to uh, get the the, uh, the lectures. This is what our math teacher, a couple of our math teachers are using for the Flip the Classroom. And uh, it's they've had success so far. It's kind of experimental, so they're adjusting it as they go. But uh, the students seem to like it. Uh, 
but Khan Academy. If you've not heard of it, please take a half hour and go through some of that stuff. One of the things they're doing that relates to gamification is they, uh, as you complete uh, courses and do good things, you get energy points. Uh, there's a series of badges. Um, you can change your icon based on how many points you have. It's kind of like buying stuff from the arcade with your tickets that you've earned. Um, in my profile, this popped up since I started um, messing with the computer science one. It says, show off your creativity, blah, blah, blah. Put one of your programs in your profile. Well, what they're talking about, and if we go and do the computer science one, any computer science people out there, you'll want to know about this too. Um, if I write a program with Khan's help, of course, um, I could put that program into my profile. Now, what you should be aware of, computer science people, is that even though it looks like there's four subcategories, they're actually all uh, JavaScript. So there's no Perl, Python, Ruby, HTML, any, and, well, it's not really coding, but um, these are all based on um, JavaScript. So you would go through, you say new program, and then you kind of write your program um, based on what they've uh, showed you, and then you test it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's pretty cool. Um, but I'll show you an even better one as far as I'm concerned for uh, learning to code uh, in a little bit. So there's Khan Academy. Next, EDX. This is a team effort between MIT and uh, Harvard. Okay, so, you know, very prestigious, you know. Um, very limited on the number of courses right now, uh, and none of them have started. So I'm not in one of their courses. As you can see, the starting dates are October, September here. Um, so I don't know exactly what it looks like, and the Google image search did not fruit anything. I'm sure if you looked hard enough, you could find something. But the one thing I did want to draw your attention to is at the bottom, the, the about doesn't help much. But the blog has some interesting things I want to show you quickly that might help you give a better idea of how you might use this in a classroom. Um, this is an article by this guy named Arthur. He's from Brazil, and he took one of these courses in the spring uh, using the EDX. And he basically went in with little knowledge of calculus and physics going in blind. Okay, so this is a, a neat little motivator. I'd like to show this to our math teacher and say, you know, you should show this to your math kid and be like, look, this is what the rest of the world is doing. I don't know, it's maybe a potential motivator. Um, some kids think, well, I'm the best in my class. Yeah, well, your class has like 50 kids in it or 100 kids or 1,000 kids. It doesn't matter. There's millions out there, and these kids are learning this stuff. Get with the program. Um, so you might want to have them read this, and um, this is this kid's experience. He's just a high school kid uh, working with his friend on stuff, um, their paperwork for their final exam. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So it's a neat little article. Um, it's just again on the edx.org website at the bottom. There's a blog section, and uh, that might be a good little uh, read if you're thinking about using it for math class for you and your students. Um, so I don't have any courses to show you, but what a great article! Um, let me go check the chat real quick before I show you this last piece. CS50. <laughs> yeah, it looks like an introductory. Teaches writing. Ah, uh, teaches writing. Um, no. <laughs> well, I'm, I shouldn't say no. I don't know of one. There has to be one. Because this, the idea of peer grading applies perfectly to writing, creative writing, technical writing, all of those. So actually my answer should be probably, but I don't know where it is. Um, like a note here. And I'll, I'll, I'll look for one and if I find one I will uh, post it in the uh, forum on the 3D Game Lab website in the... Um, uh, I'll make a new thread for it. No, I'll put it in the MOOCs if there is a MOOC thread. Anyways, if there's not one I'll make one. Um, let's see other questions. Oh, Berkeley, yes, yes. I'm guessing that's Cal Berkeley. I don't know my colleges that well. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I wish that knowledge map thing that's in the Khan Academy, I wish they would share a tool to be able to use that. I guess it's kind of like Poplet, but the the tie-in to uh, it, a quick glance to know how proficient a student is in it, I guess there'd be a little bit of uh, behind-the-scenes groundwork to make that work. But how cool would that be as a tool? Um, yes, okay. UC Berkeley, right, okay. Um, that's right, I forgot. I, you're right, Berkeley is in there. Um, okay, last thing. This is a computer science thing, so if you're not a computer science person, you can tone out for a little bit, but oh man, this is the best way to learn code in my opinion. Codeacademy.com, another free one. Um, when you get logged in, you're going to click on learn. This is a incremental checking for understanding type website like Udacity was, um, except it's all about learning to program in lots of different languages. When we looked at the con, I said that there's, I think, a, my opinion, a better way to learn programming, and this is what I meant by that was this Code Academy. Um, there's these different tracks, which uh, you could think of it as a course, so to speak. Um, they also have non-tracked content, which is kind of, you know, a hodgepodge of different programming uh, instructions but let's say you want to learn web fundamentals when I go in here it will show my progress so far I am in step one HTML fundamentals I'm 23 percent of the way there um, they have challenges which is kinda like a there's a form of gamification going on here I have points if I come back at least once every 24 hours once a day I get a streak and I get points for that um, the challenges is um, more or less an exam uh, to make you uh, put all what you've learned to good use. Um, even the HTML fundamental section is broken down by the topics. So I'm in the, <laughs> you can see how much I've done. Ready, set, go. And each one of these is broken down even further. And it's awesome because this is how I learn and I feel like my students would also benefit from this and I'm going to integrate this heavily this semester um, and uh, I think I had a Code Academy quest I'm not sure but that's why I wanted to show it here um, and this is just HTML um, I think they had a JavaScript section but imagine people that are going to college and their professor let's say doesn't do a real good job and the book has got them lost how great would it be to just come in here and say oh okay step by step walk me through it I prove that I know it by actually writing the code um, I'll go in here and show you what the actual um, well okay this is the getting started with programming section by one of their engineers Langley um, Great job. Da, 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 da. Calculate an operation like da, 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 da. So you have to write in the code. Type in your name with quotes around it. Mark. Great job. And then it takes you to the next section. So it does a little um, interaction with you. And then you go to the next section. Awesome stuff. Um, so those are MOOCs in a nutshell. What you can look for, those are the three that I have been using. I know this is going to explode further. I feel like we're just getting into this, and the big dogs have already signed on, uh, you know, the, the Ivy Leagues and some of the bigger universities. Um, but there's this is a huge PR thing for them, too, so why would they not put uh, MOOCs out there? Um, once the other universities realize, hey, you're getting a higher enrollment at your actual university now because students know about you, want to take your professor's classes because they have a, or they feel like they have a relationship with them having taken their course, even though they probably never emailed or talked to them or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's that comfort level. So um, more and more colleges are going to do this. Keep an eye on MOOCs um, for your technology integration needs. Um, like I said earlier, even if you just want to do a refresher or a new way to teach the same old topic, right? How many ways can you teach trigonometry? Um, maybe this will give you some ideas for that. Um, 
C++. Uh, I think it's an object-oriented language. I don't really know programming. Um, it's an old language, like from the 70s or 80s, but still used today, I think. I don't know. I think I got that from Wikipedia. Not really sure. Oh, here's an article on Udacity. I just got this off the Udacity website. I'll throw it in the chat window. Um, but it's a nice article about uh, how they got started and what the professors are doing. And, you know, nice little article. This chat window does not expand very big. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> you guys like Code Academy? Yeah, that's it's so useful. It. Uh, I know I haven't had much on there. One thing I wish they would do is a social aspect to it. So, like, I would love to know, like, let's say all of us sign up for Code Academy or one of the other courses together. I'd love to know where uh, you guys are at. Like, oh, man, you guys are ahead of me to kind of give that motivation of, uh, you know, how I compare to my peers, so to, so to speak. Um, maybe I just need to tweet all of my progress. I don't know. Uh, but I know that's another major undertaking, and right now they're just making great courses. <laughs> it would it, you could do screenshots and share in the game lab forum, but then you have to go check the forum and, and I I feel like anytime now I love the idea, and what I found is anytime I have to make an extra step, a side step to either go check or to go post, I don't do it. Right now I say I will, but then I end up not doing it, and so I finally uh, learned about myself and decided I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I know myself too well, I guess, which is why they always have those little tweet buttons or just convenient just-in-time placement buttons. So you just click it, tweet it, move on. But, yeah, which is, I think, why Facebook games are so uh, popular is because they're just there, and, you're, and you know what your peers are doing, etc. Um, yeah, teaching time is so scarce that I feel like I neither either need to be learning something or, you know, teaching something new or something. So I really, really sincerely hope that uh, this stuff helps you guys. Um, I, I put a, a considerable amount of time in doing some background research to try to get the best stuff because I don't want to put junk out there for my students or you guys. Um, and as more MOOCs come around, next time we do a 3D Game Lab camp, I hope you guys come back um, because I never do the same video twice. I continue trying to find the new, new things, not for the sake of having the best and brightest and newest, coolest new toy on the block, but just the best, just plain best. My theory has always been if you find a teaching tool, a technology integration tool, and it works for you, don't abandon it unless you know for a fact the next tool is going to be better. If it's just a different tool, with another bell and one more whistle, it's probably not worth it because you've already implemented the other one. Like going from uh, bubbleless to poplet. Bubbleless to poplet.com. I think it's poplet.com. Um, I finally made the switch for my uh, designing the quests. Um, I should say my entire course, but laying out the order of the quests and what opens what other quests. Um, I use those brainstorming tools. Um, but anyways, sorry, I'm just rambling. But that's just my overall theory on when to use a technology integration tool. If it's going to create more stress for you and not feel seamless, um, it's probably not going to work because you'll throw it at the students with no background use of it. If you haven't used the tool yourself extensively, it might not work. If you've not used it before, but you just heard it was a great tool and you throw it at them, it's not going to work. Why did I switch from Bubbleus? Um, let me go to Bubbleus real quick since I have my screen up. Bubbleus. One thing was the uh, collaboration feature of Poplet. Um, they're nearly identical if you just glance at them, um, but I felt like Poplet had a lot of... Uh, export and import options 
whereas Bubless was, I love Bubless, and it's actually what I taught my students last year, but I'm going to teach them the Poplet one this year um, in the context of uh, writing. If they're going to write a story or uh, give me a, a spider chart of how these characters relate in this book, in The Hunger Games, for instance. I mean, there's a lot of ways to use these brainstorming uh, uh, tools. Uh, Bubbles is, is quite easy, of course, but uh, the export options, you have JPEG and PNG, um, and that's it. Um, Poplet has several more options. I don't think there's even a way, if I remember correctly, there's not a way to actually, oh, you have to upgrade your account to import anything. I don't know if that means importing images or not, but Poplet, you can actually throw JPEGs and PNGs in there. Um, whereas Bubbles, you just have the actual little bubbles, which I know it's a brainstorm. So why would you have JPEGs or PNGs? But um, sometimes it's sometimes it's relevant, um, especially if you're doing a character map and you want a picture of each character there. Um, so that's the short answer, I guess. It's just more feature rich, but it doesn't look more complicated to me, anyways. Poplet.com, yeah. Um, I know Lisa Dolly uses Poplet. We collaborated when we did a, a presentation, and it was just nice to be able to share them, almost like a Google Doc. Um, so that was collaborating in real time. That real time collaboration has really taken off too, hasn't it? Like last week, we looked at uh, Primary Pad and those, but. Oh no, another tool. Christina's throwing tools at me. This is how I got on Poplet. Kaku. Alright, we'll check it out. Can you share without hang time in real time? You know what? I've never heard of Kaku, but what better time than now? Kaku. If you're interested, I'm interested. Create diagrams online in real time. Sure, what the crap. We'll take a take a look at it, and I will see if you guys can collaborate in there with me. Let's do a live demo. This is what I do with my students in class. Whenever they're like, oh, I heard about this, we just go off on tangents, as long as it's relevant. They always feel like they're getting me off topic. What they don't realize is that they are bringing in topics in their own interests, and it's actually really neat. Um, it's just kind of my teaching style. We just throw stuff around. Uh, I like Time zone. Uh, Eastern. I agree. Create. Learn more. Hey, I'm in. What? Why are my steps going from five, four, three, two, one? Invite my friends. Get started. I don't need the get started term. Tab, I mean. There are no diagrams yet. Uh, create new diagram. <laughs> I hope I don't do anything stupid because I've never looked at this website before. <laughs> so if I get lost, don't be surprised. I like the interface so far, though. It opened a new tab, just if you're wondering. Owned by me, shared with me, stencil, shared folder. You have 25 sheets. Yeah, Bubbles. That was another thing with Bubbles. You only get if you don't have the uh, upgraded account. You can only sh uh, share or keep. I mean, uh, like three, four, five, maybe. Other than that, you have to start deleting them. So that was kind of a bummer with Bubbles too. Okay, looks like it opened up a new tab. Chat. Share. That's what I want to do. Input email address. You know what? I'm going to stop the recording um, so that these email addresses don't get recorded. Um, but then that way I can have you guys put your emails in the chat window. Stop recording.